Hello friends, this is Deepa Suresh. Warm welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to see dinner vlog. Time is 6 o'clock evening and I am picking up some flowers to do puja. Puja Mandir is little dirty so I'm just cleaning up. Now it's time to pray the God. It's my weekly routine to pray God with flowers at least one day. So today is Thursday so I, did, I decided to do this. I always feel like praying God with dia and flowers or another great way to release stress. Now I am into my kitchen, first I clear up my daughter's lunch bag. I try my best to prepare healthy and tasty lunch and snack for her so that she finishes all of them. Next, I am going to prepare milk for my daughter and son. My son is one and a half year old, so I just give him blind milk. For my daughter, I am going to prepare post. Always use brown sugar instead of white sugar. That is the healthiest way to keep your family disease free. Next, I'm going to prepare tea for myself and my husband. I have already added two tumbler of milk and one tumbler of water. And I'm adding two teaspoons of tea. Since this is a milk based tea, I add little extra tea powder. And it's always best habit to add one cardamom and a small piece of crushed ginger into your tea. That While the tea is boiling, I'm going to prepare paratha dough. Add two and a half cups of wheat flour in a bowl. Salt to taste, 1 tablespoon of butter. This butter helps to make your parathas really flaky and crispy. First mix up salt and wheat flour and then mix this butter with it. You have to make sure that this butter is 
crumbled with flour. Now use a cold water that helps to make this paratha even more crispy. Now make this into a dough. Knead the dough for at least 2 minutes or 3 minutes that helps to make it more flavorful and texture also will be very good. Now cover it with a damp cloth and allow it to rest for 2 hours. Now it's time for me to stain the tea. Here you can see I'm using a teapot that has a stainless steel strainer inside. So you don't need a separate strainer like this. My tea has boiled for almost 5 minutes and now you may directly pour into it and all the tea powder will get hung up in that strainer. And then I have my tea at bottom of the teapot. And now you may cover it with the lid and the tea is ready to use. This is my recent favorite and if you wish you may buy it online. If you are abroad you may find this teapot easily in IKEA. Now with the brown sugar I am adding my tea. The good thing about this teapot is you may remove the stainer and store the remaining tea. For example if your husband will come late you may keep it in the teapot and later microwave it and you may serve, the, serve him. That's the another great thing I love about this teapot. This one is available online. Check the description for direct link. And now I'm going to enjoy my tea with coconut bun. This whole bun is not only for me. This is for my son and also for me. So I'm just, just going to give him half of it. Okay friends, time is 7.30 p.m. I spent some time with my daughter and son and later started making my dinner so here i have a dough ready and uh, in this pressure cooker i have green peas which i soaked for five hours and uh, pressure cooked for two vessels we are just going to pressure cook for another time so pressure cooking two times is more than enough they are done 90 percent now So now we just need to fry onion and tomatoes. Here I have a pan over stove. Add a tablespoon of oil. Onion and tomato. So this kurma will serve for 3 to 4 persons. So you can simply um, add one big onion and one tomato. With a little salt, they will get cooked really faster. Mix it well and cover it with the lid and wait for 5 more minutes. After 5 minutes, you may notice tomato and onions are well cooked. Add 3 4th teaspoon of cumin powder, 3 4th teaspoon of coriander powder, 1 teaspoon of red chilli powder, 6 cashews, 1 black stone flour, 1 teaspoon of fennel seeds, 3 tablespoon of freshly grated coconut. 
The kurma tastes really great with this coconut, cashew, fennel seeds and black stone flour. So try using all this. Mix it well, switch off the stove, allow it to cool down and grind them into a smooth paste. We are going to prepare this kurma in pressure cooker. So place pressure cooker over stove with 1 tablespoon of oil, 1 bay leaf, 1 crushed cardamom, One tablespoon of ginger garlic paste. I usually add little amount of cinnamon, glow and red chilli while grinding a homemade ginger garlic paste that add great flavor whatever dishes you prepare. Now add in your green peas that is soaked and cooked. Mix it and then add the ground paste into this. Add around 150 ml of water. Now pressure cook for one whistle and your kurma will be ready. In the meantime, I am going to prepare layered chapati or a wheat paratha. I have made 8 dumplings out of the dough. And each dumplings we need to roll really thin. When you are rolling it thin, obviously you get the dough sticking to your rolling pin. To avoid it, you need to sprinkle dry flour and keep on flipping your dough like this. This helps to avoid sticking of the dough to your rolling pin. Finally, drizzle in some oil. Spread it around. And then sprinkle some dry flour. And here comes the interesting part that is we need to fold like this. Or we need to create some layers like this. So you can notice it creates nice layers. Uh, you should get at least uh, 15 to 18 folds. Just like the way we take fleets for our sari, you have to do that. And then roll it like this. Now another important tip is to get a perfect layers. After you rolled, you have to drizzle some more oil on the top and bottom and sprinkle some dry flour. Kindly follow all the tips so that you will get a perfect layered roti. This dry flour sprinkling helps to hold the layers really well. So you need to do the same with all other dough and always ensure that the dough is kept covered with a damp cloth otherwise it get dried out and your chapati turn out to be very hard so please make sure that you follow this step so you need to rest this for another 20 minutes and then we are ready to make a layered roti so using a rolling pin simply roll it you can see how nicely the layers are you may stop at this shape to make a roti like a layered roti or a paratha or you may roll them further on to make it very thin. So you may make either thick version or a thin version out of your choice. So you may see the layers are perfect. So here I have a tawa which is really hot. Now drizzle in little oil. And then cook your rotis until it become brown on both sides. If you have a 
flat spatula like this you may just tap on it like this it helps to make your parathas more crispy so our layered roti is ready so i'm just going to do the same with the rest of the rotis Final step in this to get the layers out of the paratha you have to do like this. So just keep all the rotis while it is hot and then you have to use both of your hands and just crush them like this. It helps to uh, bring out the layers you can see. So look at these rotis guys it has a super flaky texture and also got very nice layers that is the special thing about it uh, usually parathas are made with maida which is not good for health but we have made this using a uh, atta that is a uh, wheat flour so it's a very healthy very tasty and together with that peas kurma it goes amazing for the dinner you may also prepare this layered roti and a piece kurma for uh, lunch or uh, for breakfast and this kurma also goes great with bread so try it out once and you may also replace green peas with other vegetables of your choice i hope you guys really enjoyed watching this vlog don't forget to give a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel please subscribe my channel is all about vlogging Thank you so much for tuning in. I will catch you guys soon with another interesting video. Until then, stay tuned to Deep's Kitchen by watching other videos in my channel. Bye-bye and take care.